thank you very much. Uh, as last speaker, I will not be using 22 slides. I will just try to use my two papers here, so I'll keep it short. Uh, my name is indeed Flip de Bakker, um, um, and um, I will be following in this uh, Economics and Monetary Affairs Committee very closely everything that has to do with long-term investing, uh, the link with financial regulation to the real economy. It has been something I've been dealing with for the last two years since I joined the Parliament. Uh, so I, I think uh, I can make a comment or two on this uh, in this debate. Because I think that indeed the discussion about long-term financing of the, of the real economy, as we have come to call it, is, is really going to be crucial in the next couple of months, even before the elections, that we make sure that we take some steps in the right direction. Now, before I joined the European Parliament, uh, I used to work for a venture capital firm, and I've been asked also to say a little bit about the link with long-term investing, and I uh, was really interested to see what was said already on... Uh, on biotech and biomedical companies, uh, I used to run one of these kind of funds. Uh, so I think there also uh, still a lot of work has to be done. Because of no, we know, of course, that uh, during and still now, uh, during this economic and financial crisis, um, financing of these smaller companies, mid-cap companies, but also longer-term infrastructure projects and, and other projects have really come under tremendous stress. And um, I wrote a report in the Parliament on, on uh, basic access to finance for SMEs, what we can do about this, and this is quite welcome to really give a clear overview of all the tools we already have at our disposal, but also some of the limits that we have uh, to overcome still um, when entrepreneurs are really trying to, to capture some of these uh, financing uh, issues. Um, some of the main points I, I would like to go through here. First, first of all, and it's already of course mentioned, is anything that has to do with regulatory burden. I do believe that uh, at the out onset of the financial crisis, the European Commission, also in, within the G20 uh, agenda, came forward with several types of, of regulation. I think everybody here in this room is also convinced that this was necessary. On the other hand, we also have to admit that some mistakes have been made, and especially some unintended consequences of these regulatory uh, proposals are just being seen right now. And I think there are several reasons for this. One, a lot of these regulations have been implemented quite swiftly, uh, and we also only see now some of the unintended consequences. But also the European Commission has always made impact studies based on kind of a silo approach. For every new proposal on every new part of the financial sector that they tried to regulate, they did an uh, extensive impact assessment. So each piece of legislation as such makes sense, was, was, was quite well supported. But of course, we are living in an ecosystem of uh, financial players. And of course, how is all these regu regulations, how, how are all these regulations playing into each other? I think this is still uncharted territory, although the Commission now also with its green paper has made the start of that debate, but I think much more work needs to be done on that to make sure that the regulatory burden, not only of uh, CLD4 separately, IFMD separately, but the interactions between all these uh, different regulations, you know, all know, uh, you know all these 25 acronyms that we are working with, how all these uh, parts of legislation are playing into each other, because it makes the fact that several different players in the market, uh, which are often party and counterparty to each other, have to face different rules. Uh, the one can only stand on the left leg with the right hand bent to its back. The, only, the, the other one has to put a hand in front and, and stand on both legs. And it makes it very difficult to really make sure that everybody is compliant with all the rules at the same time. And we just saw an example here. Uh, for example, when somebody wants to set up, set up a long-term investment fund, it faces some uh, challenges with the IFMD directive, for example. But we have many, many more uh, examples of this. Secondly, of course, also, this regulation should be consistent. I was in a debate a couple of weeks ago in Lithuania where uh, there was uh, somebody of the French regulatory authority uh, who made a list of all the inconsistencies in, in uh, financial regulation that we are seeing today. And this is really hampering also the normal functioning of institutions and markets. At least try to do a cleanup exercise there uh, with the new commission to make sure that at least across these, all these different regulatory uh, proposals we are being consistent. A last point, of course, and this is maybe turning the tables around, there is, of course, still, uh, not only now dur during this crisis, but still today, a very risk-adverse mentality in the market. Um, people, funds, fund managers are not able or willing to take necessary risk, and especially in the banking sector, partly due to regulatory constraint, but also partly to uh, uh, maybe a, an overreaction in, in mentality change. There you see that there's really risk-adverse uh, problems that, that arise, and that makes that not the right match is being made between the type of finance that a company or a person is looking for and uh, the, the, the financing uh, proposals that a bank or a financial institution uh, can make. 
And what we are trying to do, of course, is, is to really to make sure that the system has, uh, is, is, is stabilized in the first place. Uh, I'm not going into the details of the macro discussions on banking union and other things. I think that still a lot of work has to be done, especially on the banking side. I understand this was one of the topics uh, this, this morning. My opinion on this has been that we have not been frank enough uh, to each other and that we have tried uh, to, to hide some of the problems that the banking system is still facing and that we are carrying on this problem much longer than is needed. And some frank, lang uh, frank language and open, open thinking, I think, is needed in that respect. Of course, if we, if we are talking about how we're going to develop this stable long-term uh, European vision on, on, on financing of companies and, and, and projects, I think that it's also necessary that we make sure that we uh, are... Um, uh, consistent and, and that we, if we see some problems arise, and if we do implement the changes, that we also provide for enough stability in the system. I think there's nothing more uh, annoying to companies or to investors than to have every six months a new type or a change in regulation that they have to face. So there also the stability, I think, is very important. And then my last point is, is really a, a much, much larger point, is that of course, there is no silver bullet in solving this long-term investing pr problem. There's also no one-size-fits-all solution to this problem. I think that we need all kinds of, uh, of finance to make sure that we recover with sustainable growth because I already uh, heard a couple of people mention growth. I don't believe that we can go back to the growth that we have seen over the last 25 years, which was debt fueled, which was based on financial innovation but with not any contributions to the real economy, on the contrary. But I do believe that we have to set free also uh, the financial system to make sure that they can play their normal role in transmitting uh, uh, money into the uh, financing of, of, of companies. So in that respect, I think that we really have to work also as European policymakers to set up a system which allows for a much more diversified system of financing of companies and projects. I think this is really going to be crucial. This is going to change. Uh, this is going to require regulatory change, but also mentality change, both at the financial side, but also at the entrepreneur side. And I give you one short example. I was working with, uh, with a venture capital firm before I joined the European <coughs> Parliament. One of the major issues that we had uh, with a couple of, of people was that they, they were really reluctant to give up control. It's always the same debate. So if you want more private equity or venture capital players in the market, then also the entrepreneurs have to understand that the moment that they get 10 or 100 million uh, euros being put in their company, that, that these investors also would like to see some not only returns in the end, but also some control about how this company is being managed. And especially with smaller or, or mid-sized companies, this can often be, be an issue. So I think we have still a lot of work uh, ahead of us. Of course, what we also see, and this is something that I, that I witness very closely, is, for example, if we want to make sure that we have really companies who are, or on the one hand, just starting up being really innovative, that they get the adequate finance, or companies who are growing and want to go to a much more international scene and conquer new markets or develop new products, that we have to develop also a specific type of financing. And for example, today for these small, innovative startup, startup companies, venture capital funds are providing this liquidity. But today we see in the market that 50% of the funds that are being put up for venture capital is coming from public institutions. It's no longer coming from private investors. And this is really, I think, part, again, through regulatory issues, but also part because, of course, one, the returns have not been very well over the last couple of decades, but also the fact that there is a risk-adverse mentality here in this system. So we also have to make sure that these kind of institutional investors come back to also these uh, growth-oriented uh, types of, of investing. I think that's really, really crucial uh, for the long-term growth that we are pursuing. My final remark would be that um, we need long-term investors, we need uh, long-term uh, funds with have, which have a long uh, uh, time horizon, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, foundations, endowments, the list that you have before you, they can all help to really stabilize financial markets. So uh, also as from a policy side, I think we have to really make sure that they can play their role and that we also create structures that allow them to play their role. What I often see is that fundamental problems within the economy or within the financial sector are not being addressed and that we try to create patchwork, that we try to create uh, solutions to a short-term problem that we see. And in that respect, we also as policymakers become short-term innovators or short-term investors in, in new policies. And I think we also have to take a much more longer time horizon. What policies do we need so that institutional investors can come back to their normal role that they are playing in the, in the economy, in financing the real economy, in providing stable returns to their investors, but also to make sure that, they, that these funds can, can survive so the storms that we have seen over the last couple of, of years. So in that respect, the Green Paper presented by the Commission is an interesting uh, first uh, start of a debate. Also, the European Long-Term Investment Fund uh, is, is an idea that is, uh, that is now being put forward. 
And my question to you all, because of course we are not only here to listen, but also to enter into dialogue, my question to you is, is twofold. One, do you really believe that this is going to be a difference in how long-term projects are going to be financed? And secondly, if so, why didn't the market already come up with this solution? And I think that's really a crucial question for me, why every time uh, for these kind of things we are looking at governments or policymakers to solve the problem, why can markets not, not solve this? Or what is hampering markets in solving these kind of uh, problems or uh, getting over the mismatch that, we, that is there between short term and long term? It's an open question and I hope that we can have a good debate about this. Also in the Parliament, uh, it's one of the themes that uh, I will be following very closely. I'm really looking forward to the debate that I can have with you, the exchange of views. And of course, the door is always open uh, to have a further debate or a further exchange of views with you. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon. Thank you.